Sometimes you just want to simplify your music listening life. Why do I need all this hi-fi gear if I can get something much more streamlined that's simple to set up and use? Wouldn't it be great if I didn't have to mess about with various cables and stands and boxes and components and wires and all that stuff? So right here, you're looking at Triangle Audio's newest all-in-one, or rather all-in-two, speaker system. And then you might be asking, what are you talking about? Aren't you a kind of an old-school separates guy? What the hell do you know about this stuff? Well, that's true. I do like to tinker about with all manner of hi-fi components, and I do have way too much gear <laughs> piled up and drawers overflowing with wires and stuff. But this kind of product does intrigue me. I can imagine a time sometime in the future when I decide that I've had enough with all this stuff and clear it all out, sell it, you know? Hell, I did it back in 1999 when I believed two-channel hi-fi was dead and that it had succumbed to the horrible scourge of Dolby surround sound home theater. So I'm Wondering if something like the Triangle Twins could make me happy, could make me a happy music listening camper if I decided to go that route. So, in this video, we're going to take a closer look. Last year, I reviewed Triangle's previous compact powered speakers, the Alara LN01As. And if you compare them, they're actually quite similar. The twins are actually a tad smaller, but have similar drivers, being a two way ported design. Each box has a 5 inch or 13 centimeter woofer and a 1 inch fabric dome tweeter. I, I like the, the fabric of the uh, the grills, I'm not sure if I'd care for much for this shape, but this kind of pill type shape, but they're held on with pretty strong magnets, which is nice. All right? It's nice that they're held on, magnets. And I remember enjoying the Alara LN01As and, I, and appreciating what they offered to a music lover who wants a simple solution to their office or bedroom or modest sized living room. They were definitely a quality product that delivered exactly what they were designed to do. But I do recall, however, that I thought they lacked a degree of engagement and clarity that I required for me to consider them for my own use. And around $869 at the time, they were not an inexpensive option. In 2022, Triangle's up the game First improvement I see is they named them the Twins, or the AOI Twins, which is much better than Alara LN01As. And they've packed a lot into these small boxes. The cabinets feel really well made and the edges are all rounded and smooth. There's no apparent joins that I could see. The analog inputs are RCA and a 3.5 millimeter jack. And the RCAs can be switched from line level to phono and it has a ground connection for the turntable as well. On the digital side, I do see that they removed the coaxial input and replaced it with USB for something like a portable flash drive. I don't believe you can connect a computer to them. And between the inputs is a subwoofer output, which is a very nice thing to see. The volume knob is one of those continuous turning controls without a top or a bottom. And they connect to the internet via Wi-Fi or with the Ethernet port. AirPlay 2 works with these, so you can stream Apple Music to the Twins, which is awesome. There's also Bluetooth 5.0, which is an upgrade from 4.0 on the previous model. This is the primary unit with all the electronics inside, including the built-in Class D 50 watt per channel amplifiers. You connect it to the other speaker with the included wire or use one with more convenient banana connectors. The new remote is nothing special, but it's an improvement over the stubby little one that was included with the previous iteration. It's larger, so it's easier to grip in your hand, and it pretty much has all the controls that I imagine you will need. 
They are available in a frosted white like these, black, gray, eggplant, blue, and a maple wood grain finish. These are definitely nice little compact speakers and they, they definitely feel solid and well made. So far it's like, well, why did Triangle even bother replacing the Alara LN01As? These are not very different speakers at all. Well, let me tell you what they did. They added music streaming capabilities. And unlike the previous model, where you, where you were required to add a digital music source like a CD player or a streaming device, the twins have a built-in streaming module and a dedicated app. And it's all accessible through the Triangle's AIO, iOS or Android apps. You can stream up to 192 kilohertz, 24 bits via Deezer, Spotify, Tidal, Kobuz, Amazon Music, and tuned in internet radio. So let's take a good look at Triangle's AIO app. This is where some components can really fall short. Designing and implementing bug-free software that's user-friendly and has a good interface is, is a much different proposition than making hi-fi components. When you first switch on the twins, they must connect to your local network, and they take a few seconds to do so. I'm using Wi-Fi in this instance, and please know this is not Bluetooth. They access your Wi-Fi or wired network, which does support higher bit rate, lossless music. Connected to your Wi-Fi network. Through the App Store, Triangle provides an iPhone and an iPad version of the app. Now, this app has not been updated in over a year, however, and this is generally not considered a great thing. And it confirms what I said about software. Apps require a lot of resources. And as you may know, updates should be released regularly to provide bug fixes and add new features. After the app finds your device and connects, it asks you to choose your streaming service or services. Now I stopped subscribing to Tidal last year and switched to the less expensive Amazon when it started providing lossless and high-res music. Once you log into your streaming account, the AIO app can access your songs and playlists. It reminds me a bit of the Blue OS app for my Blue Sound Node. The downside of Amazon, just like in Blue OS, is the interface is kind of basic and your saved library songs, albums, and playlists on Amazon are segregated from the overall music Amazon Music app. So you must choose between My Music and Amazon. So if you're in My Music and want to search for a new album or track, you must back out of it and tap on the Amazon link. It's not the fault of the AIO app. Amazon doesn't really accommodate third-party apps very well. And you can't add or edit your library through this app, so you can only use the Amazon Music one to make any changes. You get the hang of it, but it's not ideal. The iPhone version is pretty much the same, just on a smaller screen. The app is snappy and the Layout and navigation is pretty straightforward. It has features like EQ bass and treble controls and an alarm clock and sleep timer. And I've never really tried the tune in internet radio feature, but if you want a radio type experience, it appears to know my location and has found a local station here in St. Augustine, Florida. So that's kind of cool. One of my gripes is that when you want to adjust the volume, it requires an extra tap to show the volume bar. It auto-hides after just a few seconds. Why don't they just leave it always visible? And like in Blue OS, the physical volume buttons on the phone don't have any effect. I actually prefer to use Apple Music through AirPlay 2, as I get the full app feature set, including playback and volume control on the lock screen. The only possible downside to AirPlay 2 is that it's limited to CD quality, not high res which you do get with the Amazon app. Okay, let's get down to it. What do I think of how the twins perform? Well, I disconnected my MagnaPad speakers and my big Bryston amplifier. And the Air Acoustics preamp and Blue Sound node were not needed either. 
For an analog source, I connected my Lin LP12 to the twins through a Parks Audio Puffin Phono preamp. And later on, I connected the turntable directly into the twins using its own built-in Phono preamp. So for over two weeks, this was my primary hi-fi system. The room has some acoustic treatment and is approximately 12 by 12 feet in dimensions with a 10 foot ceiling. And along with music streaming, I listened to an assortment of LPs. And you know what? I did enjoy them very much. You know, they lean a bit towards sounding a little bright, but not harsh or strident to my ears. I found the mid-range satisfying and natural with vocals and mid-rangey kind of instruments. Now where they don't necessarily excel is in the lower frequency department, in the bass. What you get is, is okay, but not tremendously memorable. And I had them pulled out from the wall up on dedicated stands, and they did produce an impressive wide and tall sound field. Not that deep, but wide and tall, and they almost even disappeared. Now, from my experience with them, they were at their best with the volume turned up some, rather than down low. And they will play loud without much distress, so they can rock. Looking at the Room EQ Wizard measurement of the twins in my room, it confirms what I heard, that the twins have a fairly respectable flat response with a slight rise from 4K to 16K, and at the other end, the bass starts to drop off at 100 hertz, it bumps up a bit at 65, and then plummets. Triangle does make a companion powered subwoofer for these twins, but none were available for me to try out. So I connected my little 8 inch episode subwoofer, and things really started to cook. With a sub, I do believe I could live with these speakers long term. The missing lower frequencies were now there in abundance. So I strongly suggest anyone considering the twins to include a nice compact sub to partner with them. And as I said earlier, they do have a subwoofer output. And it makes a really big difference. I've not tried Triangle's subwoofer offering, but I'm going to speculate that it will likely suit the twins very well. Playing the Lin turntable with a moving magnet cartridge through the Puffin Phono preamp and into the Twins, the sound was noticeably richer and dynamic compared to how it sounded using the built-in Phono preamp. Not that it sounded bad, mind you, it was more than satisfactory. I would say, though, in general terms, that a dedicated quality Phono preamp is going to give you that little something extra. But I don't believe that Triangle designed these speakers to partner with a turntable like the Lin Sondek LP12. They actually designed it to be used with this turntable. The Triangle turntable. Made for Triangle by Project, the Austrian turntable manufacturer, it's a manual belt drive two-speed model with an aluminum tone arm that comes with an Ortofone OM10E cartridge. It's dead simple to set up and get started. The cartridge and tone arm are pre-mounted and balanced, so there's no fiddling with those required. The counterweight is locked in with a screw, so the tracking force is taken care of for you. You just put on the belt, attach the wall wart power cord, and plug in the photo cables to the back of the primary twin and connect the ground wire, and you're ready to go. The MSRP on this in the USA is $599, but I've seen it for sale for $399. It's stylishly designed and will look nice on a shelf or tabletop. And compared to my other turntables, it's quite petite and lightweight at only 4 kilos or just under 9 pounds. So if you place it on a smooth surface, it can easily slide around while using it. Now, Triangle did pay attention to some of the important components, like the tone arm, which has a sapphire bearing, and the cables are said to be of high quality materials. After all that, I am impressed with how records sound when played on this turntable. The little budget Ortofone cartridge sounds good through the twins. So, in my opinion, this is an excellent package, 
and a great way to begin a relationship with vinyl records. Oh, and I almost forgot. Using the digital optical input, you can connect them to a TV to get great stereo sound for on TV shows and films. The only caveat is that the TV remote won't control the volume. It's, that's just how it is with Toslink. You'll need to use the app to do that. Now let's say you wanted to put together a little system of separates with the capabilities of the twins. What would you choose and how much would it cost? Well, I put together a system from components that I own to compare. So for the amplifier, I have a PS Audio Sprout 100. It's a cute little Class D amp with similar power to the twins. And it has its own built-in DAC and phono preamp. For streaming, this is the latest Blue Sound node, also with similar capabilities as the twins. And for loudspeakers, how about the Triangle Borea Bro 3s? Yes, they're considerably larger and universally praised by enthusiasts for their sound quality. And they originally retailed for $599, but you can be, they can be found online for under $400. And you also need speaker cables and interconnects to get the whole, put the whole thing together. So a system like this, you will need to spend at least $1,900 plus tax to get what the twins can do for a retail price of $1,150 plus tax. Now in terms of overall sound quality, I must give the system of separates with the Triangle Bro 3s the edge over the twins, but the twins are not that far behind and they're considerably less expensive and far simpler to set up and use than the system that I put together. You know, a couple of years ago, I was a bit more biased against lifestyle products like this, but I'm really glad I gave the Twins and the Triangle Turntable a chance. And I do recommend that you give them a chance if you're in the market for something like that. If you found this video informative and entertaining, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. You know, there's over 90 videos available of mine to watch now. And I recently launched a Patreon page that gives members early ad-free access and behind-the-scenes posts. And I'll put links to that and, other, and the other items featured below in the description box. And anyway, thanks and peace out.